السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعض أوكي Like I mentioned, um, today we're going to begin <clears throat> dealing with the issue of suyam, fasting. We're going to deal with the issue of fasting because Ramadan is right around the corner. It's, it's approaching us. And it may take a few days at the rate we're going to get through the abweb. And I think that that's good. I think that this is a good time. And we push the zakat back because Ramadan is important for us right now because it's approaching. And the zakat will not be obligatory upon us until after we complete the fasting. Bidnilah <clears> ta'ala. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Musa. صوم شهر رمضان ركن من أركان الإسلام وفرض من فروض الله معلوم من الدين بالضرورة. So fasting the month of Ramadan, as we know, is a pillar from the pillars of Islam, and the obligation from the obligations that Allah سبحانه وتعالى has obligated us with, and it is known. In the religion, by way of necessity, that everyone who knows about Islam knows that we fast in the month of Ramadan. They may not know all of the specifics, but they know that we fast in the month of Ramadan. وَيَدُولُ عَلَيْهِ الْكِتَابُ وَالسُنَّةُ وَالْإِجْمَاعُ And the book, the Quran, and the Sunnah. And the consensus of the scholars, they all point to this. They all point to this. So there is no dispute. قال الله سبحانه وتعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم. Allah سبحانه وتعالى he says, O you who believe. Fasting has been prescribed upon you. It has been made obligatory upon you as it was made upon those who came before you. إلى قوله تعالى شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليسمه Up until his statement, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the month of Ramadan, in which the Qur'an was sent down upon you, a guidance for mankind, and clear proofs from guidance and criterion. I have a question about fasting. I am a diabetic. It be hard sometimes, or some days, some days I make it through. We're going to cover that, inshallah. We're going to cover that. Inshallah, we'll be able to cover it in this chapter or in the questions and answers. But inshallah, we'll get to that. 
Barakallahu Fiqh, may Allah make it easy. So keep your questions coming. Um, like I said, we can ask questions during the dars, or we can save them for afterwards. There'll be time, inshallah, ta'ala. I'm going to slow down a little bit because now we're starting to get into some technical stuff. Everything is technical, of course, but we're going to start dealing with these issues and we're going to deal with some ahkam, some rulings, and some fiqh. Now, and the meaning of kutiba in this verse, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says kutiba, what it means is furidah, obligatory. وَقَالَ فَمَنْ شَاهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلَيَسُمُهُ وَالْأَمْرُ لِلْوُجُوبِ الْأَمْرُ لِلْوُجُوبِ And he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and whoever witnesses this month, whoever sees this month, whoever is alive and present when the month of Ramadan begins, then he must fast. And the Amr, the obligation, when Allah, His Messenger, commands you to do something, it means that it is obligatory to be done at that moment or when it's prescribed to be done. Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa qala al-Nabiyyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Buni al-Islam ala khams wa dhakra minha sawma Ramadan. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, that the religion of Islam, that Islam has been built upon five, and he mentioned therein the fasting of the month of Ramadan. And the hadith which indicate this obligation and his virtue, the obligation of fasting and his virtue then they are many and they are well known. They are famous. al Muslimun wa al Muslimun ala wujubi sawmihi wa anna man ankarahu kafara. And the Muslims have consensus. They have, they have come together upon the obligation of fasting it. And whoever denies it has indeed disbelieved. Whoever denies the obligation of fasting in the month of Ramadan has disbelieved. He has made kufr billah. And we have the, here we have this word again. Jama'ah. Right? Which means to come together. We mentioned that when we took some definitions about the sunnah and the jama'ah. The coming together. The being united. Right? And we're going to get into the opposite of those words too. The, the, um, the opposite of those words as well. Because they're also very important. والحكمة في شرعية الصيام أن فيه تسكية للنفس وتطهيرا وتنقية لها من الأخلاق الردية والأخلاق الرذيلة. And the wisdom behind the legislating. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. نكير. Good to see you as always. And the wisdom behind the legislation of fasting is that it is a purification of the souls. The souls become pure by way of it. A form of purification and cleanliness and being clean and pure from the, the things that, 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 that we, the bad things that we mix, that, that, uh, we mix with. And those lowly, based manners, the immoral actions and behaviors that some of us have. Fasting helps us to purify ourselves and cleanse ourselves from that indecency and immorality. يَجْرِ مِنْ ابْنِ آدَمْ مَجْرَ الدَّمْ That is because it 
it tightens. It it tightens. It, it, it restricts Shaitan's ability to run through the human beings, to manipulate the human beings. Because of Shaitan, as the Prophet وسلم, he said, he runs through the children of Adam like blood runs through the veins. So Shaitan is constantly busy in himself, manipulating the children of Adam. He runs through them like blood runs through the veins. And fasting is a way of purifying and protecting yourself from the whispers of Shaitan. فَإِذَا أَكَلَ أَوْ شَرِبَ إِنْ بَسَطَتْ نَفْسُهُ لِلشَّهَوَاتِ وَدَعُفَتْ إِرَادَتُهُ وَقَلَّتْ رَغْبَتُهُ فِي الْعِبَادَاتِ وَالصَّوْمُ عَلَى الْأَقْسِ مِنْ ذَلِكِ وَالصَّوْمُ عَلَى الْأَقْسِ مِنْ ذَلِكِ So, if a person, or when a person eats and drinks, his desires sometimes overwhelm him, they overtake him. And his resolve is weakened. And his desire for worship becomes small, it diminishes. And so fasting opposes that. A fa fasting helps to assist in that. Right? It takes you away from eating and drinking and physical desires and pleasures. And it causes you to concentrate and focus on the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because fasting itself is worship. وَفِي الصَّوْمِ تَسْحِيرٌ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَشَهَوَاتِهَا وَتَرْغِيبٌ فِي الْآخِرَةِ وَفِيهِ بَاعِتٌ عَلَى الْعَدْفِ عَلَى الْمَسَاكِينِ وَإِحْسَاسٌ, بأ... وإحساس بِآلَامِهِمْ لِمَا يَذُوكُهُ الصَّائِمْ مِنَ الْأَلَمِ الْجُوعِ وَالْعَطَشِ لِأَنَّ الصَّوْمَ فِي الشَّرْعِ هُوَ الْإِمْسَاكُ هو الإمساك بالنية عن أشياء مخصوصة من أكل وشرب وجماع وغير ذلك مما ورد به الشرع وتتبع ذلك وتتبع ذلك الإمساك عن الرفض والفسوق نعم and fasting is abstinence is abstinence, is abstaining from the dunya, the worldly life, and its passions, and desiring the hereafter, and desiring the hereafter. And in it, a person starts to sympathize. He starts to sympathize with the poor and less fortunate. And he starts to feel some of what they feel as far as pain. Because the fasting person, he feels pain, the pain of hunger and thirst, right? He starts to feel that, so he understands what the poor and less fortunate are going through. He's fasting intentionally, and they fast because they have no other choice. They're hungry, they're thirsty, they don't have any provisions. So he starts to sympathize with them, and he understands the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon him. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for him. Al-Razaq is from his tawheed, his rububiyyah, is that he provides for his slaves. And he starts to understand what they have, what they are going through and it humbles him. Because at any given moment, Allah subhanahu, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can take that blessing from him if he's not thankful And that is because fasting in the legislation, it means imsak. It means to withhold something, right? To stay away from something, to curb something with the intention, with, the, with a specific intention, having a specific intention along with that imsak. And that specific intention is that a person will not eat he will not drink and he will not have sexual relations or other than that from what has been uh, mentioned in the legislation. Right? 
So, imsak, this abstaining, it is from indecency also and open sin. So a person also abstains not just from food, drink, and sexual pleasures, but also from indecency and immorality and open sin, which the Muslims should try to stay away from anyway. The Prophet ﷺ, he said that all of my ummah will be forgiven. They will be forgiven for their sins except those who expose their sins and make their sins known. Right? And it is for the believer to cover the faults and sins of his brother. He shouldn't chase after his defects and his sins. The Prophet ﷺ, he also said, whoever covers the faults of his brother, Allah will cover his faults. And whoever exposes his brother or his sister or her sister or her brother, then Allah will expose them even in the confines of their own home. So the believer is, in essence, a shield a form of protection for his brother, for his sister. He advises him or her. She advises him or her. And they don't go after their shortcomings and their defects in order to expose them in front of the people. So all of this is contained in the legislation of fasting. وَتَنْتَهِي بِغُرُوبِ الشَّمْسِ قَالَ تَعَالَى فَلَآنَ بَاشِرُوهُنَّ يَعْنِي الزَّوْجَاتِ وَابْتَغُوا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ وَكُلُوا وَاشْرَبُوا حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَكُمُ الْخَيْتُ الْأَبْيَدُ مِنَ الْخَيْتِ الْأَسْوَةِ مِنَ الْفَجْرِ ثُمَّ أَتِمُّ الصِّيَامَ إِلَى اللَّيْلِ ومعنى يتبين لكم يتبين لكم الخيط الأبيض من الخيط الأسود من الفجر أن يتضح بياض النهار من سواد الليل. And the fasting begins. The obligation of fasting begins with the emergence of the second fajr. Fasting begins with the emergence of the second Fajr. Right? This is what's known as the true Fajr. When the prayer becomes, uh, when, it, when the prayer time enters. Not the Fajr. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh shadeed. Not the Fajr uh, that the people are uh, known to uh, be aware of when they wake up and begin their suhoor, right? This is more or less an incitement, uh, a ten b, uh, letting you know that fajr is on the way. So start eating your pre-dawn meal, so that you can start your fast. So the actual fajr, the tulul fajr thani, this is. Uh, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Now, you may approach your women. You may go to your wives and be intimate with them. And go after. Seek out what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for you. From provisions. Eat and drink. Until the white thread becomes distinct from the black thread. Of Fajr. Then complete your fasting up until night time. And what he means here by And what he means by until the white thread becomes distinct from the black thread of Fajr. It means that the day will become clear. The whiteness of the day will be clear, become clear from the darkness of night. وَيَبْدَأُ وُجُوبُ صَوْمِ شَهْرِ رَمَضَانِ إِذَا عُلِمَ دُخُولُهُ And the obligation of fasting the month of Ramadan, 
This takes place when it is known that Ramadan has entered, that we have that that, that Ramadan is upon us, that we have entered the month. لِلْعِلْمِ بِدُخُولِهِ وَلِلْعِلْمِ بِدُخُولِهِ ثَلَاثُ طُرُقٍ and knowledge of his entrance is in three ways. At-Tariqatul Ula, Ru'yatu Hilali, Qala Ta'ala, Faman Shahida Minkumu Shahra, Faliyasumu. Al-Baqarah, verse 185. Wa Qala Nabiyu, Sallallahu Alayhi wa Sallam, Sumu li Ru'yatihi. فَمَنْ رَأَى الْحِلَالَ بِنَفْسِهِ وَجَبَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّوْمُ So the first way we know that the month of Ramadan has entered is by the moon being sighted, the hilal being sighted, the new moon of that month. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And whoever witnesses, whoever witnesses it from amongst you this month, then let him fast. And the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, fast when you see the moon. When the moon is sighted, begin fasting. And whoever sees it himself, then it is, upon, it is obligatory upon him to fast. He must fast. If he sees the moon and he understands it to be the moon, then he must fast, even if he's the only one who saw it. A tariqah to thaniyah, الشهادة على الرؤية أو الإخبار عنها فيصام فيصام برؤية عدل مكلف ويكفي إخباره بذلك. And the second way is the witnessing of it, meaning the moon, of course, or hearing that the moon has been witnessed. Or cited. So you fast with the citing of one who is honest and upright and who is commissioned to do so. Mukallaf, the one who falls under the category of the people whose witnesses uh, is taken. And it's sufficient, this particular hearing, or when this news comes, and this is sufficient. Right? So whenever we hear that the moon has been sighted, it's okay for us to start fasting with that witnessing or with that news that we receive. لقول ابن عمر ترى الناس الحلال فأخبرت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أني رأيته فصام وأمر الناس بصيامه وراه أبو داود وغيره وَصَحَّحَهُ إِبْنُ حِبَّانِ وَالْحَاكِمِ Now, and this is in line with the statement of Ibn Umar, رضي الله عنهما. He said that the people were looking for the hilal. They were looking for the new moon. And I informed the Prophet وسلم, that I myself saw it. So he began to fast. Meaning the Prophet وسلم, he started to fast and he ordered the people to fast. Right? And Abu Dawood and other than him, they related this hadith and Ibn Hibban and Hakim, they authenticated it. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. الطريقة الثالثة إكمال عدة شهر شعبان ثلاثين يوما وذلك حينما لا يرى الحلال ليلة الثلاثين من شعبان مع عدم وجود ما يمنع الرؤية من غيم أو قطر أو مع وجود شيء من ذلك لقوله صلى الله عليه وسلم إنما شهر تسعة وعشرون يوما فلا تسوموا حتى ترى الحلال ولا تفتروا حتى تروه فإن غم عليكم 
فقدروه له ومعنى اقدروا له أي أتموا شهر شعبان ثلاثين يوما لما ثابت في حديث أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه فإن غم عليكم فعدوا ثلاثين جزاكم الله خيرا بارك الله فيك وحفظك أيضا أحسن الله إليك نصر الله العافية والسلام نصر الله العافية والسلامة من من كل سوء ومكروه نعم أوكي okay. and the third way the third way of knowing that the month has entered is by completing the month of Sha'ban 30 days. And that is when the moon has not been sighted. Right? So, the 30th day, uh, night of Sha'ban, now, if the moon has not been sighted, by the 30th day of Sha'ban. And this would happen if there was some something in the sky, some overcast or something like that, some clouds or some rain or the presence of anything that would obstruct your vision. In this case, we would complete the month of Sha'ban 30 days. And the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, verily the month is 29 days. The month is 29 days. And he said, so do not fast until the moon has been sighted, until you see the fast, until you see the moon. And he said, do not break your fast until you see it. And if by chance that, that you were unable to see it because of overcast skies, clouds, rain, or something like that, then you would do whatever you were able to do. And that is to complete the month of Sha'ban as 30 days, because the months can only be 29 or 30 days. This is why we look for the, for the, uh, the hilal and we don't uh, guesstimate, as they say, by calculations and things like that. No, we look for the moon. We try our best to look for the moon wherever we may be in the world. And if we find it, if we see it, or if we hear that it's been sighted, then we fast. And when we hear likewise that it's been sighted, then we break our fast. And that can be after 29 or 30 days. So we never say we fast for 30 days. No, we fast for 29 or 30 days, depending upon the sighting of the moon. Or if the moon can't be sighted, then we complete the month of Sha'aban, 30 days. Now, وَيَلْزَمُ الصَّوْمُ رَمَضَانِ كُلَّ مُسْلِمٍ مكلف قادر فلا يجب على على كافر ولا يصح منه فإن تاب في أثناء الشهر صام الباقية ولا يلزمه قضاء ما سبق هال الكفر نعم so fasting is a must it's obligatory upon every Muslim who is مكلف and who is capable. And what we mean by that is that it is obligatory upon every Muslim, every Muslim who, have reached, who has reached the age of discernment. Because this is when the angels start to write. This is when the angels start to write. And those who have the ability to, right? Like, for example, the physical ability, mental, you know, uh, health-wise. And we'll get into that. And it is not obligatory upon the disbeliever. The disbeliever doesn't have to fast. And it's not correct that he fasts. Nor is it something that will be accepted from him. Now if he was to repent. And this question came up. And the person asked this question by way of phone. And if a person has my number and they rather text me questions. Then that's okay too if it's a little difficult on here. You can text questions to me. 
And that way we can answer them as we go or afterwards. Um, and the question was the toba of a kafir. Because we mentioned shirk and, you know, but the toba of a kafir, even here, that he says, and if this person was to repent during the month, then he or she would fast the rest of it. And it would not be obligatory for them to make up that fasting. The fasting that happened before they became Muslim, while they were upon kufr. So the only toba for a disbeliever is shahada. Shahada. Because we, we talked about the fact that all of their deeds will be rendered null and void along with their shirk. That shirk wipes away all good deeds. So we don't care what type of humanitarian a person was in this life. We don't care about the Mother Teresas and all of these people. We don't care about those people, what they did in this life. The only thing we care about is whether or not they died upon Tawheed or Shirk. So the Kafir who wants to atone for his or her sins, the only way to do so is by saying, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Then they become Muslim. Even if they were to do it on the 27th, 8th, or 29th day of Ramadan, they only have to fast what's left, and they don't have to make up for what preceded. وَلَا يَجِبُ الصَّوْمُ عَلَى صَغِيرٍ وَيَصِحُ الصَّوْمُ عَلَى صَغِيرٍ مُمَيِّزٍ وَيَكُونُ فِي حَقِّهِ نَافِلًا And the fasting is not obligatory upon the young. Right? But it would be okay if they fasted, if they were uh, those who can distinguish. You know, if they, were, if they were starting to get a little bigger and older, they, you know, they just haven't reached what we call, call bulug or something like that. No wet dreams or no coarse pubic hairs. Then these children, if they were to fast, then it would be considered nafila for them. They will get rewarded for it as if it was, it was a voluntary action. And it will be for them like that. وَلَا يَجِبُ الصَّوْمُ عَلَى الْأَلَى مَجْنُونٍ وَلَوْ صَامَ حَالَ جُنُونِهِ لَمْ يَسِحَ مِنْهُ لِعَدَمِ النِّيَّةِ And fasting is not obligatory upon the one who is crazy, the one who is insane. And if he was to fast while he was in this state, then it would not be correct. It would not be accepted for him from him because... He didn't have no he, he didn't have the niya. His intention wasn't for it. He he wasn't sane enough to know how to make a proper niya. Now, okay, now, this issue of uh, insanity or a person being crazy, this is something that has to be determined by someone in that field. We can't take it upon ourselves to say who is entitled to fast and who shouldn't fast. It's not for us to determine unless we know the person well and this case or situation has already been determined. Allah knows best. This person may know his or herself better than you, and they know what they're capable of, and Allah rewards and punishes and excuses who and whatever he wills. وَلَا يَجِبُ الصَّوْمُ أَدَاءً عَلَى مَرِيدٍ يَعْجُزُ عَنْهُ وَلَا عَلَى مُسَافِرٍ وَيَقْضِيَانِهِ حَالَ زَوَالِ عُضْرِ المرض والسفر قال تعالى فمن كان منكم مرضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر and fasting is not obligatory it is true that during the time of fasting is it true that during the time of fasting we're not allowed to use technology or something like that no this is not true 
No, you can use whatever you like to use. The only thing we've been prohibited from doing is eating, drinking, having sexual relations, and doing immoral acts of indecency and sin, you know. And some of that may not even technically break your fast, but it will definitely take away from the merit and reward of your fasting. But using technology and things like this, no, it's not something that will break your fast. And if it's not important, it's something that can distract you from worship. But no, it's not impermissible to do. You can do whatever you like uh, during fasting. The only thing we say you can't do is what's been mentioned. Now, so one who is sick or traveling or not able to fast then this person has an excuse. But they have to make up their fasting when they return from traveling or when they become healthy again, so on and so forth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and whoever from amongst you is ill or on a journey, then he must make up his fasting in days that come, in following days when he's uh, relieved of that hardship or that difficulty. Well, the khitabu bi ijab is siyami yashmalu al muqima wa al musafira wa al sahiha wa al marida wa al tahira wa al haid wa al nufasa wa al ma'na alayhi ah, afwan wa al mughma alayhi fa inna haulai kullahum yajibu alayhim al siyamu يجب عليهم الصوم في ضممهم في ضممهم بحيث أنه بحيث إنهم يخاطبون بالصوم لا يعتقد وجوبه في ضممهم ولا عزم على فعله and the one who is being addressed the one who is being addressed with the obligation of fasting then it, 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 it means the one who is a resident, the traveler, the one who is healthy, the one who is sick, the one who is pure, the one who is menstruating, the one who is on a menses, and those who have postpartum bleeding, bleeding after birth, the one who is in a coma, for verily all of them, it is obligatory for all of them to fast when they are capable, right? Because they are being called upon. They are being addressed. They are being addressed with this obligation. And they should know without a doubt, and they should believe that it is obligatory upon them to do when they are capable. And they should have a resolve to do so. إِمَّا أَدَاءً وَإِمَّا قَضَاءً فَمِنْهُمْ من يخاطب بالصوم في نفس الشهر أداء وهو صحيح المقيم لأن الحائض والنفساء إلا إلا الحائض والنفساء ومنهم من يخاطب بالقضاء فقط وهو الحائض والنفساء والمريض الذي لا يقدر على أداء الصوم ويقدر عليه قضاء نعم whether uh, carrying this out, whether fasting or making it up. And from those who are addressed with fasting, with this obligation, either in the month of Ramadan, by fasting, for the one who is a resident or a healthy resident, then they have been addressed with the obligation of fasting except for the one who is a woman who is having a menstrual cycle or a woman who has postnatal bleeding, meaning she's just given birth or something like that and she hasn't, uh, for lack of better words, dried up from her bleeding, right? And those who are being addressed, these are the people who are required to perform uh, the action of fasting in the month of Ramadan so long as they are able to. Like a woman may begin her menses in the month of Sha'aban, even if it's somewhere near the end. So maybe the first week of Ramadan, she's not able to, but she continues fasting in Ramadan when she's clean. And there are some who uh, 
will have to make up for it. Like the one who is menstruating or having postpartum bleeding. Uh, or the one who is sick, who doesn't have the ability to fast. Then these people will have to make it up. They will have to make up their days. And this is something that many people are negligent. Many people are negligent as it relates to this. There are a lot of women, unfortunately, who sit around all year. They know they have a menstrual cycle. Some of them longer than others, a few days, maybe a week or more. And you have a whole year to make this up. But they wait until the last minute. And then they find themselves struggling in the month of Sha'ban. Then Ramadan comes and they haven't made up the fasting from the previous month. This is incorrect. And she should fear Allah as it relates to this. Now, um, now, وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يُخَيَّرُ بَيْنَ الْأَمْرَيْنِ وَهُوَ الْمُسَافِرُ وَالْمُرِيضُ الذي يمكنه الصوم بمشقة من غير خوف من من غير خوف التلف. And from them, there are those who have a choice between the two matters or the two conditions. They have a choice, and this is the one who is sick and the one who is traveling, the one who has the ability to fast, but they may fast with some difficulty. And this is if they don't fear harm or some sort of loss. So the musafir, the one who is traveling, he can fast if he chooses to. It's not a must that he break his fast. This is a rukhsa. This is a permission that he has been given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has been giving him this permission, this, this ease. Allah made it easy for him. It's from Allah's mercy. Because as the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that, that, that traveling is a piece of punishment. And a lot of us don't understand that or didn't understand it because you think traveling is usually fun. I'm going on vacation. I'm going to some amusement park or to some exotic island or something like that. So, so traveling is fun. But no, especially post 9-11, traveling is difficult now. But all the security, the checkpoints, taking off your shoes and belts and clothes and being frisk and having your body x-rayed and all of your clothes sometimes being pulled aside and questioned and having your bags bombarded. Traveling becomes difficult, man, especially for the people who have to travel by way of some sort of a riding beast or public transportation, greyhound or hitchhiking or on foot or whatever the case may be. Traveling is difficult, Right. So if a person is, for example, maybe he has a short flight. He had a two-hour flight, nice weather. You know, he gets somewhere in the same time zone. He may want to fast and continue his fast and break fast with the people, you know, where, he, where he's at. Then he can do that. Or a person who's sick, for example. A person is sick, maybe stomach ache, headache, some sort of pain, you know, uh, some sort of injury to his leg or arm or something like that where he has to take pain medication or he or she may be able to handle the pain. They say, no, it's only a few hours. I can take it. You know, I'm going to go ahead. That's okay. So this person has a choice between those two matters. Or man, وَالْحَائِضُ وَالنُّفَسَاءُ تَطْحُرَانِ وَالْكَافِرُ إِذَا أَسْلَمَ وَالْمَجْنُونُ إِذَا أَفَاقَ مِنْ جُنُونِهِ وَالصَّغِيرُ يَبْلُغْ فَإِنَّ كُلًّا مِنْ هَؤُلَاءِ يَلْزَمُهُ الْإِمْسَاقُ بَقِيَّةَ الْيَوْمِ وَيَقْضِيهِ وَكَذَا إِذَا قامت, إذا قامت البينة بدخول الشهر في أثناء النهار فإن المسلمين يمسكون بقية اليوم ويقضون اليوم بعد رمضان and whoever breaks his fast because of a reason and then that reason no longer exists during the day in Ramadan like the one who is traveling and he returns from his journey 
or the woman who is menstruating and, or, or having postpartum bleeding and become pure, or the disbeliever who embraces Islam, or the one who is crazy and who comes back to his sanity or regains his sanity, or the one who is young and reaches puberty, then all of them, then they are all obligated to fast the rest of that day and make it up later. They have to make that day up, even though they fast some of it. And likewise, the one who, or when it becomes clear to a person that Ramadan, or that the month has, has started during the day, then they should fast and make up the rest of the day after Ramadan. Inshallah. هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. Uh, if anyone has any questions, then by all means. And just to clarify what this means, إذا قامت البينة بدخول الشهر في أثناء النهار, if it becomes clear that the day has entered, meaning like you may be somewhere or you may not be aware and you may see some brothers or sisters and they, you know, they say Ramadan Mubarak or something like that. You say, hold on, man, today is Ramadan. Oh, man, subhanAllah. And it's Zuhr time or Asr time or something like that. Then they say, wow, I didn't even know. Then they should start fasting from that point and then make up that day later. So anyone has any questions or comments or corrections, then please uh, feel free to present them at this time. Let me check the phone and see what I got going here. Okay, Sheikh, when you say al ma'na al haqiqi lil wala wal bara al mara al qadima al mara al qadima, what exactly do you mean here? Dua ala mali, ya akhi, indama tadras hadha dars. Naam, inshallah. والله أنا كذلك أحبك الذي أحبك الذي أحببتني له أو في سبيله وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته حبيبي خليل أحمد عبد الرزاق القاري القاري الجميل So if a woman becomes clean midday after Dhuhr, she should start fasting and make that day up. Yes. This is the opinion of Shaykh Al-Fawzan, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, and maybe others, but I know for a fact that it's his position. What's the best way for someone new into this to get through Ramadan? Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah. Well, the best way um, is, first of all, patience, um, a pure intention, purifying your intentions for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and starting now. Try to fast a day or two in this month. It's a good month to fast in. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to fast in this month more than any other month besides Ramadan. So you can get some practice in right now. You know, but it's pretty easy. You just got to put your mind and heart to it. It's not as difficult as it may seem. It's going to take some getting used to. But you discipline yourself and you realize why I'm doing it. Why am I doing this? For whose sake am I doing this? I'm doing this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that should make the affair easy. You know, because we think about the things that we enjoy. And we think about the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does for us. And this is a very minute sacrifice for a tremendous reward. Allah rewards fasting like he rewards no other act of worship. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. He said, fasting is mine and I reward for it. Because fasting is that thing that you can't really fake. Not, not 
Yeah, of course, Allah knows everything. But with the people, um, a person can can pretend to be fasting. Meanwhile, he's drinking. Meanwhile, he's eating when no one's looking. So you can't basic. You can't fake fast. You can't. Fa How can you fake fast? Meaning, no one knows if you're eating or drinking. Whereas prayer and charity and things like that, you can make a public display of that. Someone walks in the room, you can stand up and put your arms on your chest or sit down and point your finger and pretend like you've been praying all of this time. You can grab your beads and start making dhikr like you've been making dhikr all day. You can pick up a mushaf and pretend to be reading Quran in order to show the people that you, you know, some, some aspects or some, some symbols of piety and righteousness and ibad and worship. But in reality, you can't do this with fasting. Only Allah knows a person who's truly abstaining. The brother Jamal said, hydrate at night, inshallah. I'm going to have a lot of head pains with no one. No, man, no, not at all. You're a young man, a young, strong man. It's going to be easy, man. It's going to be easy. Don't let yourself get tricked. Don't let shaitan trick you. It's going to be easy. You may think that, but if you're a young, healthy, strong person... Because you eat in the morning. You get up and eat before the, the morning prayer. You get up and eat. You have a meal. You eat something that's going to sustain you through the day. Something that's going to be, you know, that's going to have a lot of moisture in it. Like the brother said, something that hydrates. Something that's not going to, you know, affect you to the point where it's going to have you hungry in a couple of hours. You know, eat the prescribed foods. You know, talk to the people of knowledge to professionals in that field that can prescribe certain things to eat at breakfast time. And when you break your fast at night, uh, like around 8 o'clock or a little later now, because it's getting a little later, around 8 or whatever the case may be, you eat whatever you want to eat. But when you fast, your stomach shrinks. You're not going to be able to eat as much as you think you are going to eat anyway. So you're going to eat a little bit, pray, and you're going to sit down, but you try to eat healthy things that things that uh, benefit the body and help you retain hydration, water, and things like that. Now, as far as a person who has some sort of illness, diabetes, and things like that, then like we mentioned, you can fast or you can break your fast, talk to your doctor, and be real with yourself. Most importantly, be real with yourself. You can't be real with anybody until you're real with yourself. A person knows what he or she is capable of doing, but Allah wants ease for you and not difficulty. So if you're sick and you have a legitimate excuse for not fasting, then no one can blame you for that. You know, But if you want to fast and you're concerned about whether or not you'll be able to do it, then you go and speak with your doctor. You know, some people have medicine or dialysis or something that they do once a week or they take medicine once or twice a day. You can take the medicine in the morning and take the medicine when you break your fast. You know, a lot of people are stronger than they like to admit. But if it's something that you fear or if it's something dangerous and you have to take your medicine, then I'm not a doctor. I'm not a doctor, at least not in this field. So you can talk to your doctor be real with yourself, talk to your Lord, and do the best that you can do. Fear Allah to the best of your ability. Taqdillah mustata'ah. Fear Allah to the best of your ability. Now, as far as the wala, the wala and the bara of the woman, or the person, that which preceded or that which passed,
ما هو قصدك في هذا السؤال يا حبيبي القارمة هو القارمة arriving or I don't know really know what you mean um let me see this other question Ah, Afwan, Afwan, I don't know why I looked at You said Al Maratul Qadima. Ah, oh, okay. You want me to repeat this? You want me to, to, to mention the issue of Al Walab Al Bara? I, I, I read that too quick. SubhanAllah. Okay. The issue of uh, Al Walab Al Bara, it all depends on what we're uh, talking about. What we're talking about. In general or specific, uh, we have wala and bara with um, the disbelievers. We have wala and bara with the Muslims, you know, who may be upon sin or misguidance or innovation. The people of bid'ah, the people of fasad, the people of khuruj. And basically our stance in general is that we align ourselves with the people of khair. The people of Tawheed and Sunnah. The people of uprightness. This is who we align ourselves with at all costs. At all costs. We align ourselves with the people of Khair. Ahl al-Qibla. The people who face the Qibla. We align ourselves with them. And we connect ourselves with them. At all costs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us. وَاَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Allah commanded us and hold on together all of you by the rope of Allah and don't be divided. And don't be divided. Don't be divided. And as far as disassociation, then we disassociate from the people of evil and the people of corruption. And our position with them is advice, to advise them to do what the Prophet ﷺ commanded us to do when we see evil, that we change it with our hands. And if we don't have the ability to, then with our tongues. And if we don't have the ability to, then we hate it in our hearts, this being the weakest of faith. And the issue of wala and bara is a wide bath. And if we want specifics, then we can probably mention specific situations or specific groups of people. And Allah knows best. Okay. Um, which prayer... Breaks fast. Maghrib. Maghrib. Sunset. The time of sunset. Not necessarily the prayer, but the time when that prayer comes in. The time when that prayer comes in. So at the time of sunset, this is when we break our fast.
Okay, I don't see any more questions coming. So with that being said, Subhanaka rahum wa bihamdika. Asharu la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruku wa atubu ilayk. So inshallah, we'll see you tomorrow after Maghrib 825. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.